Irving, how are you? Very good, teacher. Thanks for asking. Ah, what did you do today? Uh, I stay at home for the moment. Okay. You didn't have to go out today. Uh, yeah, I didn't have to go out for the moment. Um, I I just been studying. Okay. Okay. Good. Good to hear that. Okay. Let's see who else. Ah, we have a couple more in here. Okay. Osmel, how was your day? I'm fine, teacher. A little tired, Osmel? Yes, teacher. In my job, uh, I work too much. The solution is easy, Osmel. Don't work. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh huh. In the weekend. Yeah, that's the re yes. You need to relax in the weekend. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, teacher. <laughs> And you? The same, always working, a lot of activities, but not like Joanna. I imagine Joanna's still in the office. <laughs> Joanna, are, you, are, you, are you in the office? Yeah, in my work in the morning. <laughs> Hasta donde el cuerpo resista. <laughs> oh. Así dicen los viernes, pero ok, ok. <laughs> what time do you finish working, Joanna? What? Sorry? What, what time do you finish working? Uh, uh, the finish and in the middle, middle night. <gasps> At midnight? Midnight, yeah. Wow. That's very Eight. It's como report, report, finish month. Uh, uh, it's difficult in di different activity. Uh, my, uh, my function uh, uh, is only, <laughs> solo yo. <laughs> uh, that's why, a lot of responsibility. Okay. Pero, yes, you have but, a lot. But, but it's interesting and Eh, no sé cómo se dice aprendizaje y estoy aprendiendo learning. mucho learning okay. learning okay yeah. okay okay all right Irving how about you everything oh yes we said Irving yes it was good and Neida good evening teacher how are you Neida uh, fine teacher and you Doing excellent. Not like Joanna because uh, I finish at 10, but on uh, Joanna continue to midnight. <laughs> Let's continue in my work. Yeah, yeah. You are very dedicated, Joanna. I like that. I like the work ethic. Very good. Thank you. Huh? Good. Well, guys, I'm glad to have all of you. Thank you so much for coming and I know sometimes it's difficult, so thank you. It's the last day of the week for the class, but good. It's good that you are here. Today, our objective is to review the last units to make sure that we are prepared for the exam. Uh, I know some of you already finished the exam, and that's excellent. That's wonderful. But it's always good to remember the grammar, the vocabulary, and how to use it, OK? So like yesterday, we are going to make partners. We are going to be together watch the video, re practice the conversations, do the vocabulary, make sure you understand the grammar, and then we come here and make sure that everything is okay. Okay? Okay. Jesse. All right, perfect. Okay. Let me see. Let me just put you to... All right, let's see, hang on a second. Okay.
Aida, did you have a problem? No, I think so. I don't know what happened. Okay, hang on. Let me try one more time. I don't know what happened. Okay, let me try a different one. Let's see one more time, Aida. Let's see to another one. Hey, how are you, Oscar? So, Oscar and Edwin, we are reviewing unit four. You are going to do similar to yesterday. Uh, we're going to look at the vocabulary. Uh, we're going to practice the conversations, and then we're going to make sure that it's clear for us what the grammar is for unit four, okay? So right now we're going to review, sorry, sorry. Right now we're going to review unit three, my apologies. First unit three and then unit four, but right now unit three. It's okay, Monica, Oscar, Edwin? Yeah, teacher. Okay, perfect. Then I'll send you to your rooms and that way we can practice. Okay, I'm going to send you to your partners. That way we can practice a little bit the grammar for unit three and all of the exercises.
All right, Roxana, I'm gonna send you to a group. That way you can practice that grammar that we are looking.
Golan. Any questions? Uh, anybody have anything that's not clear? No, no questions? No. Okay. Okay, continue practicing then. Oh, you see, see, yes, question. <laughs> Me gusta. No, no, no. Sí, sí, sí. Okay, go ahead, Reina. A ver, a ver. A ver. Um, in the video 3.1. Okay. Solamente que era una duda. Ya le digo. El so, to, neither, and neither. No. And antes de ese video, el primer video, okay. solo es una palabra. Um, mood. Mood. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, yes. How the mood is how you feel. Are you happy? Uh, uh -huh. This is the mood. Es como se siente uno, o como que no estoy de ánimo, o algo así. Yes, decir. exactly. Mm -hmm. Ah, pues sí, eso teníamos un poco de duda. Nada más esa palabra. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, good, good, good. I'll let you practice that. Do you guys have any questions? Any anything that's not clear? Yeah, if you have questions, ask me. But yeah, yeah. Uh, si nos hicimos algunas preguntas y Eneida me ayudó mucho a algunas palabras. Okay, como grupo. Okay, Joanna, you were saying, uh, what were the what were the words or what were the vocabulary? Uh, yeah, uh, the uh, Eneida me me aclaró sobre todo uh, trouble que no me acordaba que trouble um, y quiero ver qué otra uh, creo que hubo una más aquí bueno en la otra conversación también así que uh, okay. y, a height, la pronunciación de height. Okay, very good. Yeah, thank you for helping. Very nice. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Y Joana, ¿hay algo que no te quedó claro todavía? Any words or grammar? Eh, Joana. Eh, no problem. No problem. Did okay. you remember, Joana, that, that cup, cup of, como I said that? Lamb, okay. Yeah, lamb, uh -huh. cup of. Ajá. Ajá. Eh, cordero es como lamb. Lamb. lamb is correct. Lamb. Okay. Cordero, lamb. Mm -hmm. I don't remember uh, for the the power the 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 calf and the chips. Lo recordé por la fábula del cordero y el lobo. Ah, yes, yes. Okay, good, the lamb. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Anyone else? Anybody else have any questions for unit three? Teacher, yes. ¿Por qué se usa? What kind of dressing would you like? Dressing? Dressing is... Dressing, what well, the meaning of dressing? Dessert is, is, is postre, porque después le dice blue cheese and vinaigrette, pero dressing? Es dressing, le está preguntando qué tipo de aderezo, aderezo, dressing. Adressing, uh -huh. la palabra dressing, aderezo. Aderezo, uh -huh. y ahí le dice que quiere el blue cheese. Ah, okay. Vinagre, creo que dice también, ¿verdad? Blue cheese. Or... No, es, no es verbo. No, 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 no es de, de verbo. Mm. Es, ajá. Okay. Uh -huh. Blue cheese, what is the meaning in the uh, dressing? Yes, blue cheese is a dressing. El de, el, no sé, el de queso azul. That, uh, <laughs> queso azul. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, teacher. You're welcome. You're welcome. Una otra? No, the others are okay? Teacher. Yes. Uh, ¿Cuándo se va a utilizar? 
es que siento que son similares. What, what, by, eh, por ejemplo, en la conversación, what kind uh, of dressing would you like? Y uh, would you like anything to drink? Uh -huh. O sea, siento que son similares. El, sí, sí. Agrega, en ese como que está el what y en el otro no, pero igual preguntan algo. Sí, en, en ambos es para preguntar algo. En uno están preguntando qué tipo de aderezo y el otro la ensalada, digo, el tipo de bebida, perdón. Sí. Eh, o sea, como que dan una, una opción en el what. No, eh, eh, ah, sí, eh, eh, en, en, en what es que no das la opción. Porque le está diciendo eh, que ellos elijan, pero uh -huh. would you uh -huh. like es que porque tal vez solo tenés dos tipos de sodas. Por ejemplo, yo solo tengo coca o café. Entonces te digo, would you like coffee like. or soda or Coca-Cola? Ya como algo específico, o sea, algo que sí, que sí se sabe que, que, que está, por ejemplo. Exacto. O que se tiene. Uh -huh. Ajá, pero si yo digo, what would you like, es porque tengo variedad y puede... ¿Qué va a querer? Uh -huh. ¿Cuál va a querer? Exacto. Uh -huh. Ok, thank you. You're welcome. Only that? Yes, teacher. Ok, ok. ¿Nadie más tiene otra pregunta? Si no, vamos a la unidad 4. Any question, teacher? All right, excellent. Okay. okay. Let me change. More. Let's change some partners to make sure we have more. So now we're going to go to unit four. Remember, the idea is the same. Practice the conversation, check the grammar, make sure you understand the vocabulary. Okay? This, this is the important part. Hector, you okay? Okay, Hector, I'll put here in case you want, right? You can watch here the videos and review. And when you have the option, go to the group. Words, listen first. Welcome to one more section. Listen to the following vocabulary. Repeat it as many times as needed. Are you ready to learn new words? Listen first and then repeat each word. Beach, desert, forest, hill, island, lake, mountain, ocean, river, valley, volcano, waterfall. Thank you. 
Ask me the questions. Sure, first question. Which country... Hi guys, in the conversation we're about to listen to, the speakers use comparative adjectives. Do you remember how to compare? Stay around for the explanation. It is important to practice and understand the conversation. Listen and practice. Here's a geography quiz in the paper. Oh, I love geography. Ask me the questions. Sure, first question. Which country is larger, China or Canada? I know, Canada is larger than China. Okay, next. What's the longest river in the Americas? Hmm, I think it's the Mississippi. Here's a hard one. Which country is more crowded, Monaco or Singapore? I'm not sure. I think Monaco is more crowded. Okay, one more. Which South American capital city is the highest? La Paz, Quito, or Bogota? Oh, that's easy. Bogota is the highest. Hello and welcome back. Remember there are different types of adjectives? That's right. We have short adjectives, long adjectives, and irregular adjectives. With that in mind, now we'll study the superlative of adjectives. Please stay around and pay attention to the explanation as well as the audio program. Comparisons with adjectives. Which country is larger, Canada or China? Canada is larger than China. Which city has the largest population, Tokyo, Mexico City, or Sao Paulo? Tokyo has the largest population of the three. What is the most beautiful mountain in the world? I think Mount Fuji is the most beautiful. Adjective, comparative, superlative, long, longer, the longest. Dry, drier, the driest. Big, bigger, the biggest. Famous, more famous, the most famous. Beautiful, more beautiful, the most beautiful. Good, better, the best. Bad. Worse, the worst. Let's review comparative adjectives. We use the comparative adjectives to compare two people, places, or things. They are used in sentences where two nouns are compared in this pattern. Noun or subject plus verb plus comparative adjective plus than plus noun or object. Let's not forget what happens with short, long, and irregular adjectives. Study this chart and take notes as you do so. Take a look at these examples. They are applying the rules. My house is bigger than her house. His room is tidier than her room. The red car is more expensive than the blue one. Ready to learn about superlative adjectives? Superlative adjectives are used to describe an object which is at the upper or lower limit of a quality. They are used in sentences where a subject is compared to a group of objects. Follow this pattern. Noun or subject plus verb plus the plus superlative adjective plus noun. Emma, what happened? I have uh, vaccination. Okay, I, I put you again. Don't worry. I send you again one more time to the group. Okay. Okay. Noun or object. Study the chart. Just as comparative adjectives in superlative form, we also have short, long and irregular adjectives, which you need to take into account when using them. Examples, he is the tallest of his family. Michael Phelps is the fastest swimmer in the world. 
Canada is the biggest country in North America. Can you write one sentence using good in its comparative form? Now write another sentence using good in its superlative form. Write both sentences in our discussion box. Hi, in this class, we'll practice our pronunciation. Listen to the intonation of questions of choice. Repeat the questions along the audio program. Pronunciation. Questions of choice. Listen to the intonation in questions of choice. Then practice the questions in part A of exercise three again. Which city is bigger, Bangkok or Beirut? Which country is the most interesting, Korea, Brazil, or Greece? Next year, too. Hi, I want you to play the audio program and listen to the conversation. What are they talking about? Pay close attention. Listen and practice. Hey, Roxana. Here, I'll send you to the group so you can practice. Or I'm going to Australia next year. Aren't you from Australia, Beth? Actually, I'm from New Zealand. Oh, I didn't know that. So what's it like there? Oh, it's beautiful. It has lots of farms, and it's very mountainous. Really? How high are the mountains? Well, the highest one is Mount Cook. It's about 3,800 meters high. Mm hmm. How far is New Zealand from Australia? Well, I live in Auckland. And Auckland is about 2,000 kilometers from Sydney. Well, maybe I should visit you next year, too. Did you get it? That's right. They are talking about distance and measurements using the question word how. Six thousand two hundred fifty. Hi again. There are many questions we can ask with how. This time, we'll ask questions related to distance, measurement, descriptions, and conditions. As soon as we listen to the explanation, we'll ask you some questions. Get ready. Questions with how. How far is New Zealand from Australia? It's about 2,000 kilometers, 1,200 miles. How big is Singapore? It's 648 square kilometers. 250 square miles. How high is Mount Cook? It's 3,740 meters high, 12,250 feet. How deep is the Grand Canyon? It's about 1,900 meters deep, 
6,250 feet. How long is the Mississippi River? It's about 5,970 kilometers long, 3,710 miles. How hot is Auckland in the summer? It gets up to about 23 degrees Celsius, 74 degrees Fahrenheit. How cold is it in the winter? It goes down to about 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. We will use how to ask different types of questions. We will use how this way. How plus adjective plus a verb plus complement plus question mark. Let's go back to the chart. Notice how, and right after it, we have far. Far is an adjective. How big? Big is an adjective. And because we use adjectives, we must use the verb be properly conjugated. How long is the Mississippi River? How is the question word? Long is the adjective. Is is the verb be in singular. Mississippi River is the complement. Ready to answer? Here we go. How big is your country? How tall are you? Which one is the longest river in your country? How long is it? As we always ask you to do, please write your responses in our discussion box. Okay, guys, what about unit four? Were there any questions about unit four on comparatives or geography, um, adjectives, any of those things, or even numbers or measurements or whatever it is, um, or questions with how, any topics or things that are not clear? Yes, teacher, it's clear for me. Oh, okay, Ismael, very good. It's only, only I needed to practice. Ah, yes, yes. That's the idea, right? That this is the most difficult, the time to practice. Uh, yeah, teacher. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do. Excellent, excellent. Anyone else? Any questions? Any questions? No questions. No questions? It's okay. I don't have questions. Okay, excellent. Then we have enough time to do unit five. Now we review unit five. So that way you can do the exam today or tomorrow or Saturday or Sunday or Monday even. That way you can do the exam with confidence that everything is clear, okay? So in this moment, we go to and review unit five. Unit five. Roxana, any questions?
Hi, ready to start? This demo will study future tense. Please pay attention to the conversation we're about to play. As you listen to it, try to identify the two ways to express a future plan. Remember, you may listen to the conversation as many times as you need to. Making plans. Part A. Listen and practice. Say, Miguel, what are you doing tonight? Do you want to go bowling? I'd love to, but I can't. I'm going to a soccer match with my brother. Oh, well, maybe some other time. Are you doing anything tomorrow? We could go then. Tomorrow sounds fine. I'm going to work until five. So let's go around six. Okay. Afterward, maybe we can get some dinner. Sounds great. Celebrate your graduation. What is he going to do to Hi, so are you ready to talk about future plans? Good for you. I want you to take notes as you- Roxana, any questions? I can try to send you to another room. Okay, let's try another room, Roxana. I don't, I'm sorry, Roxana, I can't hear you. listen to the audio program and don't go as will stay and explain the use of future with present continuous and the use of future with be going to. Page 101. Exercise 3. Grammar focus. Future with present continuous and be going to. With present continuous. What are you doing tonight? I'm going to a soccer match. Are you doing anything tomorrow? No, I'm not. With be going to plus verb. What is she going to do tomorrow? She's going to work until five. Are they going to go bowling? Yes, they are. As you could. No pudiste, Roxana. Te sacó de la reunión. Good evening, Roxana. I, I, uh, I am sorry. I need to Do you listen to me?
See, we have two possible ways to express future. We may use present continuous as well as be going to to talk about it. It is important to know that we may use present continuous and be going to when we planned actions in the future. Also, when we're certain that something is going to happen in the future. We want you to know as well that when we predict, we do not use present continuous. Instead, we use be going to. Read the examples with me. Be going to to make predictions. Watch out, you're going to break the glass. It's so cloudy, I think it's going to rain. Now let's go over the form of present continuous. Subject plus verb to be, um, are, is, plus a verb, plus ing. Examples, she's watching a movie. They're going to the concert. These are the steps to follow when making an affirmative statement. And if the statement is negative, we add the word not between be and the verb plus ing. This is the form when using be going to. Subject plus verb to be, am, um, are, is, plus going to, plus infinitive verb. Examples, I am going to play handball. He's going to cook. These are the steps to follow when making an affirmative statement. And if the statement is negative, we add the word not between be and going to. And when you want to ask a friend or a relative about their plans, you may do so by asking using a WH question word like this. WH question word plus be plus subject plus verb plus ing plus complement and question mark. Where are you celebrating your graduation? What is he doing tonight? Remember, your WH question word will depend on what you want to know. Or you may ask like this, WH question word plus B plus subject plus going to plus infinitive verb plus complement and question mark. Where are you going to celebrate your graduation? What is he going to do tonight? Either question is correct. Now that you have listened to the audio program and the explanation, we want you to go over and learn these time expressions. This will help you to give more information when giving an answer. Time expressions. Tonight. Tomorrow. On Friday. This weekend. Next week. Can you share with us what you're going to do this weekend? Write your plans in our discussion box. Mr. Kale. Is that G A L? Hello, everyone. In the conversation we're about to hear, two verbs very close in meaning will be used. Once you listen to the conversation, practice it as many times as possible. Good morning, Parker Industries. Hello. May I speak to Ms. Graham, please? I'm sorry, she's not in. Can I take a message? Yes, please. This is Mr. Kale. Is that G-A-L-E? No, it's K-A-L-E. All right. Please tell her our meeting is on Friday at 2.30. Friday at 2.30. And could you ask her to call me this afternoon? My number is 646-555-4031. 646-555-4031. Yes, Mr. Kale. I'll give Ms. Graham the message. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Meeting is on Friday. Messages with a statement. Let's continue, shall we? Now let's go over on how to take and give a phone message using the verbs tell and ask. Get your papers ready and take notes during the explanation. Page 103, exercise eight, grammar focus. Messages with tell and ask. Statement. The meeting is on Friday. Messages with a statement. Please tell Anne the meeting is on Friday. Please tell Anne that the meeting is on Friday. Could you tell her the meeting is on Friday? 
Could you tell her that the meeting is on Friday? Would you tell her the meeting is on Friday? Would you tell her that the meeting is on Friday? Request. Call me this afternoon. Messages with a request. Please ask him to call me this afternoon. Could you ask him to call me this afternoon? Would you ask him to call me this afternoon? When leaving a message, we may state the information or request something. The way to do it when we leave a message with a statement is as follows. When leaving a message, we may state the information or request something. The way to do it when we leave a message with a statement is as follows. Tell plus person plus that plus the statement. And because we want to be polite, we may add please, could you or would you. Notice that is in brackets because it may be omitted. When leaving a message with a request, this is how we should do it. Ask plus person plus two plus the request. Again, we use please, could you or would you to be polite. Ready? This is the statement I want you to work with. Our next class is on Friday. Please write three possible statement messages as shown on the chart. And this is the request. Meet me this afternoon. Again, please write three possible request messages on our discussion box. Hi, ready to start? This demo study future tense. Hi, so are you ready to talk about future plans? Good for you. I want you to take notes as you listen to the audio program and don't go as we'll stay and explain the use of future with present continuous and the use of future with be going to. Page 101, exercise three, grammar focus future with present continuous and be going to with present continuous what are you doing tonight i'm going to a soccer match are you doing anything tomorrow no i'm not with be going to plus verb what is she going to do tomorrow she's going to work until five are they going to go bowling yes they are as you could see, we have two possible ways to express future. We may use present continuous as well as be going to to talk about it. It is important to know that we may use present continuous and be going to when we planned actions in the future. Also, when we're certain that something is going to happen in the future. We want you to know as well that when we predict, we do not use present continuous. Instead, we use be going to. Read the examples with me be going to to make predictions watch out you're going to break the glass it's so cloudy i think it's going to rain now let's go over the form of present continuous subject plus verb to be um are is plus a verb plus ing examples she's watching a movie they're going to the concert these are the steps to follow Okay, guys, what about uh, this unit? Were there any parts of be going to future tenses, um, any uh, making plans or any of that? Any questions about any of those? How do you say sorbet artesanal? <laughs> How do you say what, Osman? Artesanal ice cream. Sorbet, right? Ice cream, artesanal ice cream. 
artisanal ice cream. Yes, artisanal. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I only say in Spanish. For better than that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other words or things that you'd like to know? It's okay that uh, the difference between uh, tell and ask. He. Nothing. Nothing? Everything else is clear? No, teacher, all is clear. Okay, all right. So let me, before we go, we still have one more activity just to be sure. Okay, so now that we've finished okay. unit, unit five, the review, you can do the exam uh, today, tomorrow, Saturday, or Sunday, right? The exam has several parts. Part A is going to be a listening. You listen and answer the questions. The best is first read the questions and the options and then listen, okay? That's the first one. Part B is just putting the words in the correct order. These words are not in the correct place. So you need to put them in the correct form, right? So you put the word right. in the correct one. And there's only a few sentences. In C, you only read and select from vocabulary, which vocabulary word is the correct word to complete it. Here is the same thing, but instead of vocabulary, which form is the correct form? The ing or the infinitive, the gerund or the infinitive form? You read and you select which one. Okay. In part D, you complete the sentence with the correct way. So you use, here we have what you like to eat, the fried chicken, please. So here you have your options. You can use would, will, I'd, or I'll. You select which is the correct form to complete them. And the same here. You use comparative or superlatives of the words that are here in order to complete this one. In part E, you read, Right, and here you're going to make a request. So this is where you ask or tell the person. You read and you put down the request, which is the correct way, okay? And then okay. The, last, the last part of the exam is just a reading. You read the information and with the information from the article, you select the correct answer. Remember, it's not your answer, it's the information from the article. Okay, so I hope you have a good weekend. You have many days. You can do part one on Saturday. You can do part B on Saturday night, part C Sunday is your decision. You can go little by little or complete all at once. Okay. Okay. All right, guys, have a great night. I see you on Monday. Only two more classes. Remember, only two more. Monday okay. and Tuesday. Only Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night. God bless. You too. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.